All right, everybody, let's pull that tarp. My guest today is Chris Helfrich, the CEO of Steph and Aisha Curry's Eat, Learn, Play Foundation. Welcome to Everybody Pulls the Tarp, Chris. Thanks for having me, Andrew. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be here. Chris, I'm excited to get into everything with you. You've, you've had a fantastic career, and you're, you're only just beginning uh, in the nonprofit world, and now you're doing some really cutting-edge, exciting, you know, co- you know, community-oriented things uh, with, with Stephen Curry and Aisha Curry. We're going to get into it all. To, to, to just set a baseline for all the listeners, let, t- tell, tell everybody what Eat, Learn, Play is. Yeah, so Eat, Learn, Play Foundation uh, started by Stefan and Aisha Curry. I, I was very involved in, in, in building it, but it's their foundation. Uh, we launched in, in July of 2019 uh, with, with sort of the goal of, you know, trying to serve our community here in Oakland, California, um, a, as well as possible and making sure that really every child in, in Oakland has the, the, the opportunities to reach their full potential. And we focus on these three pillars that are, you know, key ingredients for a happy, healthy, and successful childhood. And are also these issues that are, that are really personal uh, to, to Aisha and Stefan. So the eat, you know, focuses on hunger and food security. Um, our learn pillar, uh, we've adopted early childhood literacy as, as our number one issue in that pillar. And then play, obviously, you know, is, is that comes from Seth, but it's rooted in, you know, his understanding and personal experience, knowing that play was such a, an important part of his character development, just as it's an important part of every child's development. And, you know, while we know these things to be true, kids are, are playing less than they, than they have in generations. And so, you know, we're, we work in our play pillar to make sure kids have the opportunities and the safe places to play and, and be active. And so we've, uh, it's, been a, it's been a pretty wild ride through COVID for the first couple of years of, of Eat, Learn, Play. But yeah, to your point, Andrew, you know, our, our, we're just getting started here. So, so when, when, when was the organization created? Because it wasn't, it, it hasn't been too long. I mean, and then, and then we jumped right into COVID. Yeah, you know, we started building the foundation in, in early 2019. We officially launched in July of 2019. And, you know, little did we know at the time that our that that our timing on this was was perfect, right? With the pandemic some, you know, six months away, unfortunately, we, we had just enough runway to get our legs underneath us as as an organization and get rooted in in the community enough so that we could pivot and really help play a leadership role for the community when the pandemic hit, um, focused really exclusively on, on food security and, and, and hunger, which spiked to like unprecedented levels uh, really quickly in, you know, in, in March and April of last year. And so, you know, we were just fortunate to have been able to play a major role during the pandemic, just making sure that Oakland kids, families, and anyone who, you know, struggling with food insecurity, that they, um, that they had the food they needed to, um, to, to, to be healthy. So for you as a leader, how do you, how do you deal with that? Right. You, you have, presumably you have a business plan and you've had a couple, you know, board meetings and, <laughs> and you've, uh, you, you've gotten yourself organized and then, and then everything kind of changes and the priorities shift. How do you navigate that as a leader? Yeah. You know, we, 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 we had to throw the business plan out the window essentially Um, And it was, you know, a funny story. It was like in a, in a board meeting that we had in maybe mid February of, of, of 2020. And it was Aisha towards the end of it. Uh, Aisha is very up to date on, on, on current events and trends and all these things. And Aisha just sort of said, you know, I keep reading about COVID, like what happens if it comes here and, and, and is, and, and is as bad as some people are predicting. And so, you know, I, uh, along with our, our small team, just had to sort of had to sit on that. And, and, and we had learned enough and, and had developed these, these relationships with key partners to realize that food security was going to be a big issue, right? Um, recognizing that schools were about to close indefinitely. And, and just in Oakland, we knew that 18,000 of the district's 55,000 students relied on, on, on school meals for two or three meals every day. And so uh, with no school in sight, how can, you know, the, the question was, how can we make sure these kids get fed? And so, you know, it was, frankly, you know, it, it, I, I, I really enjoy this stuff, right? Being able to, to, to try to create a vision out of a problem and, and, and work with the team to connect dots to, 
to try to come up with some semblance of a, of a solution that we can rally, uh, you know, people, donors, partners behind. You're, you're, you sure are, you're no stranger, Chris, to creative solutions, to complex problems. You know, formerly the, the CEO at the Starlight Foundation, which does, you know, some amazing work. What, how, how did you find yourself into the nonprofit world? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess this is somewhat by accident, but, you know, it, 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 I got an opportunity right out of right at, right out of school to um, to actually you know help run launch and run a, a public jazz radio station in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, you know, my alma mater, Trinity University, owned this radio station that was just sort of mixed format. And my senior year had uh, had made the decision to, to 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 move it to a to a jazz radio station, like a real jazz radio station. And I had worked there as a student. And, um, and, and they just sort of said, Hey, you know, can you, can you help, you know, try to raise money, try to build our public profile and make this radio station self-sustainable within a couple of years. And so I, I, I fell into it and, but realized early on that it was probably not an accident that I was in sort of a mission driven space, but, you know, I, I come from a family and, and come from a mom who like, you know, service is truly in her blood. And I think I got a little bit of that from her and definitely have been inspired by, by her and, and, and both of my parents. And so, you know, I think actually, you know, Andrew, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming for me. It's, it's where I just derive so much of my own sort of personal satisfaction. And how do you, how do you go about, um, how do you about go about finding what, what is going, what you're going to be passionate about, right? I mean, there's, there are so many great causes out there you know it's not just about nonprofit or 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 not nonprofit it's about finding causes and 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 organizations and foundations that you're passionate about how do you how do you do that yeah no it's 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 a great question um and i mean for me personally uh you know well there's there's some people who you know it's 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 childhood cancer or it's you know uh environmentalism right and 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 that's great for me i you know I, I care about so many of these issues and I just want to, you know, I just want to make the world a little bit better. Right. Um, and, and I know that sounds a little cheesy, but for me, you know, I realized like I can get excited probably about a thousand different issues, right. There's, there's a lot of important causes and a lot of things that need some help. And so I, uh, you know, it, it was a recognition for me that, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunities for me and it's being able to, you know, bring people together to create a vision, create partnerships, raise money. Like these were the assets that I think I, I, I bring to the table and that I could bring to any number of causes. And so if you sort of look at, you know, my, my career over the last, you know, almost 20 years now, it's, it's dotted with different issues, but there is, there's, there's that mission and social impact piece that, that, that is consistent throughout. And, and I also like just, just getting to know you a little bit, and, and your story, it, it, I, I kind of keep coming back to this, this ability to kind of reshape experiences, right? Like when you think about what you're doing at Starlight or what you were doing at Starlight, you're reshaping, you know, what, what is really a traumatic experience for a child to be seriously ill in a hospital or, or seriously ill in general. And you're bringing some, so you're trying to bring some joy and trying to come up with innovative, creative ways to bring some um, imagination and play to that experience and it's not too far you know a field from what you're doing at eat learn play you're trying to kind of take some of these core pillars whether it's the nutrition the literacy and the play and you're kind of trying to bring it to the community in a different way so i so, said uh, talk about that for a moment any yeah connection? you know what, what, one of our one of our board members recently sort of did who i've known for quite some time sort of did did articulate that sort of saying you're you're more of a design thinker than i had ever realized or, or that i had ha, had realized but yeah, I mean, once I came into these roles, um, I, I think I am, you know, a, a creative thinker. And, and it, I mean, it all starts with listening, right, in terms of identifying the problems we're going to solve and what the needs of, of, of our partners in the community is. But like, yeah, I, I totally relish that, that in my job, it is a little bit of a blank canvas to come up with new and maybe not traditional solutions to... To, to, to real challenges, you know, at, at Starlight, two quick examples there is, you know, we, um, we, we partnered to sort of help, help really launch and scale um, a, a revised, better hospital gown for kids, realizing that these old hospital gowns that are like hard and scratchy and that, 
you know, tie down the middle of the back. So a kid's butt's hanging out. Like those hadn't been redesigned in any real way in over a hundred years. It's like, you see a prototype of a better gown that's soft and comfortable and that ties down the side. And that like is, is again, a blank canvas for graphic designs to put characters on or whatever kids want to want to see. And it's like, yeah, like let's, let's bring this to life because we know it will bring, you know, a, a smile and, and, and great impact to, the, to that kid. You know, also at Starlight, we, um, you know, we had this idea, virtual reality in 2016 was beginning to take off as, as people have been claiming it would for like 20 years. And it was, you know, we're, we're struggling with how do we make this hospital experience better for kids who are stuck in the hospital for weeks or months on end. And just like this idea of, well, geez, what if we could teleport them anywhere in the world or the universe they want to go through the magic of VR. And so, you know, you, you, you make some calls and, and connect with, with a Google, right. And Stanford children's hospital sort of, you know, all these different partners and you just begin sort of putting these pieces together. And I think just sort of will these programs into, into existence. And, and I think that's a little bit the DNA that we also have at, at, at Eat, Learn, Play. Um, and what an awesome opportunity we have like representing two of the all time great people and Aisha and Stefan who have these amazing platforms, like, you know, how, how fun is my job and is the job of our team to be able to, you know, work, work with these assets to, to create real and, and hopefully sustainable change locally uh, and in a way that can be packaged and scaled uh, more broadly too. So Chris, I always wonder like with, with nonprofits and, and, and I, there's so much positivity there. And like, I'm smiling, thinking about the, the work you guys are doing with the, the hospital gowns, right? Because it's something that like seems so obvious, but like you said, it, it hasn't been tackled. It hadn't been tackled in a century. Uh, you know, and, and now you've got this, this immense platform with, with Steph and Aisha to, to, to do all kinds of creative things and bring these visions to life. But, you know, is it, it isn't always glamorous, right? You know, I, one of my, one of my, you know, one of the things I'm most proud of is, is a friend of mine and I, you know, when we were in college, we started a, a charity event, you know, locally and we went to Penn State and we started a, a charity event in town for two years at Penn State. We raised three hundred thousand dollars over those two years. And when we left college, we wanted to find a way to continue to stay involved. But we had this vision. We had this vision that uh, we could create a university platform. For, for college students to create fundraisers, right? Like there are college students who are impassioned everywhere, but they didn't necessarily have the tools to get started. So we kind of created these fundraisers in a box for students, whether you wanted to do a 5K and raise 50 grand, 100 grand, or you wanted to do a bake sale, we created kind of the, the marketing kit, uh, the tools to get started, how to contact your local police chief and get roads closed, things like that. And it, we we brought it to 50, you know 50 different campuses over a you know eight nine year period and we raised a lot of money but we always ran into barriers right i mean at every turn it felt like in many ways like no matter how good of a cause we were we were um we were working for or towards there was always something out to get us there was always something hiding behind and it felt like something that you know was just kind of innate to the nonprofit charitable fundraising community engagement world when you run into barriers how do you stay positive and keep moving forward? Yeah, I know it's 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 a great question. And by the way, I, I I've I've done my homework on you, Andrew, and the work that you've done, you know, through Penn State and otherwise is 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 amazing. You know, I think it's just, you know, it's it, it's it's being really passionate and and you know and committed to that to that vision and and sort of being willing to do whatever it takes to to see it through. But it's also recognizing you know, that there's a lot of shortcomings that I have, right? And and maybe that you and your partner had too, where where those barriers weren't weren't something that you might be able to overcome on your own. And so, you know, like make no mistake, the 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 team, for example, that we have at Eat Learn Play right now, you know, it's just it, it, there there's so much complementary skill sets and and experiences that um that you know that I think we've put the people in place who can help um to to overcome that. But I think also it's the ability to sort of act authentically and um, and 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 really earnestly to 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 be able to lean on partners too, like community partners, donors, whoever it is, in those times, and sort of lay bare your 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 challenges and you know and 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 ask for help and and you know I I always you know I used this expression that was taught to me years ago, but it's like 
together at takeoff, together at landing. You know, this idea that when you have a team and when you have partners who are bought in at the very beginning of a process, they're going to be the ones who are committed, right? And who are going to fight alongside of you along the way so that, so that you know, when you land the plane, you're going to land it safely and, and, and together, right? And so I think just having that partner orientation and really building some of that trust, not caring who gets the credit, just that the work gets done and the lives get positively impacted. Like, I think with that as, you know, as, as, as you sort of part of the DNA from the beginning, um, it's not easy overcoming those obstacles, but it's, but it's definitely, it definitely makes them, I think, um, I think it makes some of these goals achievable where, where others might get, get caught up a little bit. Speaking of obstacles, Chris, and I want to I want to start getting into this this the the bus the the eat learn play bus which was unveiled September eighth not too long ago because I think it's another example of, of 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 you and Steph and Aisha breaking down barriers and your team breaking down barriers. I mean, obviously, there's a stigma for kids with 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 so many of these services that that you know are often delivered. You said, let's flip that upside down and make this uh, make make, you know, receiving these community services a a treat. Tell me, tell everybody about the Eat, Learn, Play bus. So, so we're, we're, we're excited about the bus. Um, I won't be able to I won't be able to hide that. Uh, so we we created uh, alongside some 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 great partners, but we have have built like the world's first of its kind Eat, Learn, Play bus that's really designed you know, at, at a very high level to be distributing the resources that communities need to where they are, right? And so this, we, we bought this old 38 foot, not too old, but an old 38 foot school bus and you know, basically took it down to the studs with this company Cruising Kitchens that, that, that we worked with. And down the passenger side of this bus, uh, it, it opens up to be a free mobile market for the community. So we know right now in Oakland, Sadly, that 37% um, of, of the community and of kids growing up in Oakland are in food insecure households. So they don't have reliable access to fresh, nutritious food. Through this bus, we're going to be distributing, you know, a half a million pounds of, of fresh produce every year, other grocery staples, and then restaurant meals procured by, by local, um, m- mostly Black and women-owned restaurants in, in, in Oakland, being able to deliver great nutritious food to kids and families where, wherever they are. And then the driver's side of this bus, Andrew, um, opens up to be a free, uh, a free library for the community. Actually, more appropriately, I think a free bookstore because, you know, the kids aren't having to return the books. The idea is that, you know, any kid can come up to the Earn Play bus and browse thousands of, of age and culturally appropriate books and take home two, three, four, five, however many books look interesting to them to read and to keep, you know, there's there's books on there for 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 parents too, and also da- on this on this driver's side of the bus, uh, because of who one of our founders are, we had to put in um, a, a basketball hoop um, that uh, that actually operates on hydraulics, so that Stefan and kids in the community can can get their shots up too with this bus, and and so our play pillar could be could be represented. But y- you touched on it, right? There's there's two other reasons that we. Um, that we created this bus. I mean, one is um, to help defeat the stigma of, of receiving free resources. Kids feel shame oftentimes when, when they have to go to the food bank or when they're getting free meals at school. And there's no reason for them to feel this way. And so our attitude is let's, let's turn it on its head and give these kids in Oakland um, something better than really kids anywhere have uh, and make that experience one of dignity and, and joy. And then the other is just, you know, knowing that this Eat, Learn, Play bus is, is so colorful and, and bold and will bring people to it. How can it also be an event space on wheels for a lot of our partners, whether that's like Under Armour and Curry brand so that they can be delivering sports apparel and equipment to kids throughout the year. Or, you know, one of our dear partners is Kaiser Permanente. You know, we're talking to them about having their optometrist and other sort of health service providers come out adjacent to the bus and be doing free eye screenings you know, and giving free glasses to kids who, who, who need them. And so the bus, I think, is, is one of these creative ideas that we've brought to life um, that, that we hope will have huge impact and, and will inspire others. But I think the important point here too, Andrew, is just that, you know, it comes from understanding um, the, the community's needs and having a vision around that, right? 
Aisha, since we launched Eat, Learn, Play, has wanted to help address the food deserts that exist in Oakland, right? And, and the bus is a way to deliver hundreds of thousands of pounds of fresh produce, right, to kids and families where they are. You know, COVID made very clear that, you know, you need to be meeting kids and families where they are and, and you need to be able to, you know, go out into their communities instead of always have them come to you. And so we put this thing on wheels, right? And so, you know, it's it's fun and it's ambitious and it's a little over the top, but it is rooted in like in true community needs, uh, which which is why we we're, we're totally optimistic that it is going to be successful. I'm going to link to a picture of this bus in the show notes so everybody listening can see, you know, and it's it's got the bookstore, it's it's got the the uh, the kind of cafeteria food court on one side, and then of course it's got that that hydraulic basketball hoop for uh, everybody in the community to play. I, I, again, Chris, I think what's so cool about that, right? You hit on it there is is listening and understanding the needs of a community. I mean, so often, you know, organizations are set up with with great intentions, um, and celebrities get involved in causes with great intentions, but then there's this gap between what is being delivered and what's you know actually needed and it seems like there's such an acute focus for all of you on what is actually needed and you've got the flexibility and the adaptability and the the agility uh, i guess you could say to to really adjust and 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 fine tune what you're doing yeah and and listen we're we're 2 years into this thing and we haven't totally we haven't we we don't have it all figured out right like even our play pillar right it's still relatively uh, un underdeveloped, uh, you know, but we're going through a huge listening exercise right there with the community to better understand what, what the needs are. Yeah, I will give a lot of credit to, to Aisha and Stefan here too, right? Like they, they, they knew the impact that they wanted to have, but, you know, they've got bandwidth challenges and they don't know how to run a, a nonprofit organization, though, the, though they're, they're pretty good in like their board chair and secretary roles, <laughs> respectively. But like, they they empowered us to, to to do this with with a commitment to giving us time and all the resources we need to be to be successful. And so, you know, it's it is like that we've been able to pull this off is something we're pretty proud of. But it's not my credit to to, to be had. And you know, we're, we're never looking to take a bunch of credit. It's just you know, I think I think you end up being more successful when that's the case. Let's 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 stay on the topic of, of Stefan and Aisha a little bit. Uh, what's the what's the, the 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 biggest thing you or most significant thing you've learned from them from working around them that maybe people would would find surprising? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. I mean, I, it's not it, it, it's almost not it, well. It's surprising to me just how authentic and joyful they each are. Right? They they both have these these public images of being you know generous and being you know, of, of bringing happiness to people and, and truly being authentic. And it's, it's that case 100% of the time, right? They, um, it's just, it's amazing to, to be with Stefan, right? And to, to see the hundredth kid of the day approach him, right? And still have him, um, you know, give each person the time, right? If you were interviewing him, Andrew, he'd have probably asked you like three or four questions about yourself already. And it's just, you know, for, for, for me, right. Like I still, I still end up shaking my head at both of them. I've, I've known Stefan now like 10 years and it just to, to have somebody at a superstar level, be, be that grounded, that generous and that plugged in. And that goes for both of them. Right. It's just like, it's, it, it's almost too good to be true, but it's not. Well, and I think what's interesting about high performers, like both of them, right. That it, I find that so often, you know, because we, we talk to Olympic athletes and pro athletes, elite coaches, CEOs, best-selling authors all the time on this show. And what 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 I'm finding is is amazing is how transportable um, the skill, like the skill sets and the way they approach things are from like one aspect of life to the other so often. And then, you know, how applicable some of the lessons that, you know, we can learn from you know, somebody in sports or somebody in entertainment and apply it to business or community organizing or educate. There, there's so many parallels, right, that we can draw from. But what's what's really always amazing to me is, you know, the things that make, you know, Stefan good at what he does and Aisha good at what what she does are somewhat 
transportable. But I guess it's 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 amazing to see how um, how effective they can be in so many different disciplines. <laughs> no, you're 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 right, and 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 it's also impressive just to see how they choose to use their platform, right, for 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 good. But to that last point, I mean, I I I can't agree more, right? They they are successful in virtually everything they do, and I think a key part of that, right? And, and what sets them apart from almost everybody else is just this, this work ethic that is, um, that's truly unbelievable. And when no one is watching just the work that you know, that both of them are putting in, it's, you know, there's just, there's no substitute for it. That is exactly what we like to talk about here on Everybody Pulls the Tarp, Chris, this, this mindset where you're willing to do whatever it takes to advance the, uh, the, the greater good. But before I let you go, you, you've talked about your team. You, obviously, you've talk, you, we've talked a lot about Stefan and Aisha. You've talked about some of the people you work with. As a leader who has a big job and a, and a big mission, how do you go about putting the, the, the right people around you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great question. Um, and it's, it's taken, you know, it's taken a lot of time to hone and I still don't have it totally figured out, but I think it, I mean, it starts with, um, it starts with self-awareness for me, right. And, and trying to make sure that I'm self-aware enough to know where my blind spots are, where my strengths and weaknesses are. And, and, you know, and, 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 and then surrounding, you know, myself and, and building the team with, you know, a, a diverse group of, of people whose skill sets and experiences really, really complement one another. And so I do think, I do think that self-awareness is, is key. And then another part of it, right. And I'm not trying to give you too much of a plug, but what, what everybody pulls the tarp is about. And this idea of, you know, nothing is, nothing is beneath me, right. In, in this job, you know, I think that has to ring true for any successful leader, you know, and I spent the better part of all 2019 as a, as a team of one uh, full-time staff members at, at Eat, Learn, Play. And, in that capacity really had to do every job at, at the organization. And I did some of those jobs better than others, but I have an appreciation for what, for what everybody on the team does as a result of it. I think I can lead them better, but you know, again, a lot of it is just self-awareness to know where I might be good and, and, and where I need, uh, where I need help and just, you know, and, and trying to make sure that the team uh, has, has that level of self-awareness as well. Chris, this has been so much fun. There's no question that you and Stefan and Aisha and the whole team are a bunch of tarp pullers there at Eat, Learn, Play. I can't wait to see where, where all this goes. I'm going to link to uh, Eat, Learn, Play in the show notes. Everybody can check out a picture of the bus uh, and, and hear all, all the great work that Chris and team are doing. Chris, keep pulling the tarp and, and, and let's do this again. Let's get an update one of these days. All right. Andrew, thank you so much for uh, having me. This was a lot of fun. All right. Thank you, Chris. Take care.